All right, we are here for another breakout video. Uh, looking at We're back. the Commandy, The Last Boy on Earth by the King Jack Kirby. Since we're doing a apocalypse, post-apocalyptic romance comic, um, we thought it'd be mm -hmm. pretty cool if we looked at somebody who did something before us, and it's pretty darn good. And uh, yeah, do a little breakdown, a little talk about it, hear from other people right. with, their, with their take on it. Now, I got to just shoot this out to you, Jake. Um, yeah. You toe the line for being a Marvel boy. But what was it about Commandy that attracted you to uh, become a fan and obviously collect? Jack Kirby. <laughs> Just Jack Kirby. So there was nothing you weren't uh, impartial to. Well, Jack Kirby has the, the uh, art style and the storytelling that, you know, is really, I, th I think, you know, the, the reason why he's the king is because he has a style that is not only, you know, very, very unique and very, very artistic, you know, um, but it's, um, it's very utilitarian and it's, you know, it's pop art. Like, you know, they, you have those famous like black light posters that, you know, it, it, they are hanging in art galleries. They just take like a, a page from a silver surfer comic and they isolate it, you know, just like, just like Lichtenstein, you know, took those romance novels and like, you know, those campy panels. Um, you know, the, the, the Kirby artwork, it's very bold lines and, um, you know, and it's very stylized, very unique to him. And, you know, and then you have these ideas pouring out of his head in, in 1970 or 71, whenever this is. You know that are that are just you know it's just more of, from the guy that brought you, you know everything the Hulk, the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, um, you know the Inhumans. You know you you just go through the eras, and he you know he created. Let's face it, he created billion dollar stories, billion dollar characters, billion dollar <laughs> franchises, billion, yeah. right? Yeah, and so. Um, with Kennedy, you know, like what's happening is everybody is mining all the Jack uh, Kirby material, even if it was just his minor material, like Silver Star done for Pacific Comics, right? That could end up being a movie at any time because, you know, because everybody knows, you know, that he's just like, you know, this hit maker guy and, and he did all this stuff. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. If you go to Netflix... You can look at the, or um, sorry, Disney. Wait, is it Disney or where did I see it? I don't know. I'm, I just watched the 18-minute um, animated Commandy episode, you know, um, which which is online, at, which is on TV, and um, you know, it's brilliant. And, you know, it's it's a whole new story. It's all post-apocalyptic. You know, it is. It's clearly based on Planet of the Apes, but he goes in his own direction, and he created. You know this this whole other world, where uh, you know it's it's out in the future when something really bad and apocalyptic had happened, and he's the last boy on Earth. You know, and then and there's all of these robots and all or these you know cyborg people and these uh, animal people, and then these monsters and all this stuff is happening, and you know he really put a lot into the series. I think he went like 25 issues or something before he turned it over. Something Maybe like even that. more. Maybe even more. Maybe. Like we're looking at we're looking at this volume, which is um, twenty episodes. Um, so um, I have to say, right. flipping through your copies back in the day, this cover was the one that caught me the the, the most, and it was definitely the the rat characters, and 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 it and it and it totally brought me back to um, Thundar the Barbarian. Um, and that that um, that connection. Um, I did end up reading the um, the little opener here intro, um, which is just Mike Royer's uh, account of being uh, called by um, 
by Kirby uh, to ink for him because Kirby's in California. Royer's out in California. Alex Toth, Toth is in uh, California too. And Toth and um, Kirby are doing licensing uh, art as well, um, which I think would probably be majority Hanna-Barbera cartoons and, and such. In a conversation between Toth and uh, Kirby, Kirby's looking for an East Coaster that can ink. Uh, Mike uh -huh. Royer. Mike Royer is um, uh, uh, an apprentice to Russ Manning, and um, uh -huh. then uh, Mike Royer gets to come over to um, Kirby's house, sit at the Kirby drawing board, and ink a page with Gak smoking a cigar over his shoulder. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's then, says him, then says to him. I'm going to be working on a new project that I can't tell you about yet, you know, but get ready uh, because if these people accept you, then um, we're going to get rolling. And sure enough, it's when he goes to DC, uh, Royer is the one that inks uh, the majority of that work. Definitely from the beginning on four titles, I guess it was for uh, uh, um, um, that series. The, the was it the fourth people in the fourth world? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, Mr. Miracle and and new gods and stuff. But he had to ink an issue in two weeks and letter it in two days. And I think at some point, three years in or something, he gets uh, burned out and begs to uh, bow out. Um, of course, Jack's like, yeah, you know. Um, but then they end up meeting again and again and again and working uh, working on and on. So um, pretty neat, pretty neat little piece of history there. Um, but, um, you know, just some amazing, amazing it's not only the art; it's just the the the, the characters and the and the, the the what's going on in this panel. You know, I mean, it's just <laughs> yeah. It's, what else do you uh, What else do you need to say? It's Jack Kirby. Um, I'm just I'm just looking here at the uh, Wikipedia. It it was launched in uh, 1972, late in the year. It was bi monthly, written and drawn by Jack Kirby. Uh, what had happened was uh, the D DC was trying to acquire the license for Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Uh, and when when they failed to get it, uh, they, he asked Jack Kirby to create a series with a similar concept. And it says Kirby, uh, this is just Wikipedia, but it says uh, Kirby had not seen the films, <laughs> but he knew the, the rough outline. And he'd also created a very similar story for Harvey Comics called The Last Enemy in Alarming Tales that predated the original Planet of the Apes novel. He had also had an unused comic strip in 1956 titled Commandy of the Caves. And Kirby brought all those elements together to create Commandy. Um, although his initial plan was not to work on the comic books himself, the cancellation of Forever People had freed him up to do so. And it was an instant hit. So they went to monthly publishing schedule. And uh, Kirby provided the art and story through issue 37 in 1976. He also drew issues 38 through 40, although they were written by Jerry Conway. Kirby subsequently left DC, but the series continued uh, with uh, the artist Chick Stone. And uh, it was later written by Denny O'Neill, Paul Levitz, David Anthony Kraft, Elliot Magan, and Jack C. Harris, with art by Pablo Marcos, Keith <laughs> Giffen, and Dick Ayers. And it was finally canceled in 1978 with the final issue uh, number 59. And uh, two additional issues were completed but not released. And they were included in a treasury called Canceled Comic Cavalcade Number 2. Um, yeah, so uh, it, they say that the series was connected to Kirby's OMAC series which was set sometime prior to the great disaster. So the Kirby, so the Commandy would have been after. And that in issue, issue 29, Commandy discovers a group of apes 
who worship the Superman costume. Um, and so uh, that's also um, alluded to in the animated, the animated episode. Uh, they, they definitely bring that in. Um, yeah, so, you know, and then they have different team-ups. Commanding meets Batman, Commanding meets Superman, the Legion of Superheroes. There's all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, it's um, it was just a great uh, story and, a, you know, a great character and, you know, a great kind of um, arena for, for uh, Kirby to do these kind of, like, post-apocalyptic, um, you know, ruins, and then also bring in these other creatures and characters, and you gotta love it. You gotta love it. <laughs> I, yeah. I just, I mean, it, the only thing I don't like is the, uh, the coloring. I, you know, I wish they would keep the old coloring and just brighten it up a little, but the new coloring, uh, you know, to me, it's, it's a whole different animal. It's a bit sweet. Yeah, right, and, and, you know, it's, like, too bright. It, you know, it's too... <laughs> perfect you know and um it's too disney <laughs> yeah but the the problem is the technology you know they don't uh, they don't have the old coloring without just scanning a printed copy which has a lot of you know and you know that that's what they should do they should they should scan yeah. a printed copy yep. and then just fix it up in a way that keeps as much of the old you know, coloring as possible that's have what you've seen that fantastic issue one blow up yeah. Pages. Yeah. Where it's just literally like they did these super scans and then it's just laid out page by page, panel to panel, but it's not even like the panel in the page. It's just, they just, uh, I forget who the designer is. It was on Cartoonist Cave Fave. I'll put a link in the bottom, but yeah. Um, it was just, it, it made me recognize the power of the comic book as a piece of art. And then being reconformed, they should they should do that. I mean, I think we should even do a version of uh, of Turbo this way, you know, where it's just really looking at the art and getting these, you know, because even uh, word balloons are cut off. But you know, you've read the comic book, you know, Fantastic Four number one a hundred times by now, you know, if you're our age. Yeah. So it's not like, oh no, what are those two other words in the pen, in the word balloon? Yeah. Um. So. Well, what you're talking about is basically web tunes. Like right? that's the format where you blow everything up, and it's it's you know every single panel, it's uh, forced to you know the whole width of the whole screen, and you're just reading it like that, you know, and and you're scrolling. So you know, I think I think that's in the cards, bro. Right? I'll, I'll look a little more into it, um, but I, we might not be talking about the same thing. But these are I'll. Well, yeah, you could we'll keep talking it. about it because because the, the, the you know the, the there's a constant pop art reference to definitely Kirby um, uh, and and the the graphic quality of the work, but there's the undeniability of getting this specific amount of information arranged in the panel to consistent panels that the whole comic is now a piece of art. Right. And the, it's just, you know, it, it, it's it's very hard to find uh, um, stuff like that, that is just engaged. And it just goes to show that he most definitely formulates the whole thing. And I've seen him say this in interviews on YouTube where it's just there in his head. He just has to put the physical time down with a pencil and a cigar at his little drawing and put it out. So if any edits is, are being made, they're being made on a very nuanced way. The paging, the paneling, the, the, the specifics of what's going to be said, it's all there living in his head. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's what's really truly separates him. Plus the what, 70 years he made comics? Yeah, six decades, yeah. <laughs> Starts, you know, in, starts in 1938, I think it says, and uh, yeah, yeah. and and yeah. uh, wow, yeah, so I mean, he started very young and he ended very old, <laughs> yeah, but he started in an animation studio. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah, he was uh, what was it, Flesher? I think it was the animation studio. Oh, really? But I think that's one of the things that um, can either discourage you as a comic book artist or encourage you is. 
when you're going through his work, there's this immediate like, oh, ooh, wow. But then when you start re reverse engineering and getting into this and looking at it, you go, whoa, how do you, why, what made that decision? Uh, 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 yeah. You know, and then you can feel a sense of uh, discouragement. <laughs> you know, like, I ain't going to be able to do anything like this. Because the style is just, a, I think, a whole nother thing for discussion. I look at this as really concise storytelling in comic book form. Yeah, It's not trying to become a movie. It's not trying to become a comic book. Even if DC was saying, dude, we got to make this and we got to try to turn it into a Saturday morning cartoon or so you got to blah, blah, blah. He was like, mm, okay, all right, I'm going to make my comic book. Right. You know? Yeah. And you're saying he never even saw Planet of the Apes? <laughs> Well, not not only that, but he had a a story in the fifties that that kind of predates the Planet of the Apes. That was a similar concept. So, how about that? Maybe maybe Planet of the Apes saw that story. You know, no, Planet of the Apes is a it's a French novel. Um, I think it's even um, oh yeah, early sixties. Yeah, and it was translated as a paperback. I have a copy. As a matter of fact, I've read it, and it's pretty. Uh, the French have some really good sci-fi. If you get a hold of it, uh, translation-wise, um, yeah. So that's that's that that's where that comes from. But um, here we got the Silver Surfer. <laughs> right. Well, that's Ben Boxer who uh, who pr yep. presses the button and yep. it becomes a chrome, uh, you know, shiny chrome uh, creature. Well, this is interesting, right? So that. That really makes it kind of divert from the Planet of the Apes because there's all this, you know, futuristic technology and these these guys that were like programmed to still exist and uh, have the have their mission. But look at that page on the left. Oh my God! Just the colors and the, you know, it's just like one big box and then four little boxes and just like the action and you can just jump you can jump the blues you can do a boom boom right. ba -boom, boom, wham, right crash right so you're, well, you're, yep, you're it's red yellow blue then it starts merging with the green this nice little you know pink they got the pink and then this uh, purple so yeah you're talking about the, the balance the color balance yeah, yeah. Just the color, just the color. The only thing that kind of trips me up is the suppression of using red in the, um, like here, it's very hard to read this, but it also comes across as a secondary element. So it's not a primary element that you're supposed to read Karash. It's more, the this guy's, you know, th these guys are thrown in together and then there's Karash and then there's this bouncing back, but. Every, every everyone is in red, you know. Um, so, but so Ben Boxer was an ally, right? And he had, and there was a lot of other guys like him, right? That had that the design of being um, of uh, you know robot men, right? They were they looked like humans, but when they pressed their cyclo heart, they turn into uh, you know these uh, robotic or these metallic warrior guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's uh so so Commandy, you know, there were, he wasn't all alone. He was the last boy on earth, but he wasn't all alone. He had plenty of allies and um, you know, and and bad guy good guys and bad guys, lots of kind of like straw characters to fight, you know. And um you know, what was at this point in the story, what's his what's his mission? Like, you know, what are they trying to do? Just survive or they were was this after they were captured? Yeah, they've broken free of the um, uh, the royal uh, stables there. Uh, remember, they were in the pen. Right. And so he was basically a slave. Right. And there was, was some kind of... Yeah, the royal city kennels, the kennels. <laughs> so, you know, and then, and then Ben shows up. Right. So they were... And uh, I think they're supposed to go into this arena... Is that part of it? I know. We're going to find out. We're going to find oh, okay. out. So, and so the secret of Ben Boxer is revealed. Right. Like all life in this new world, he reveals yet another road taken by a living organism to survive in the lingering period of radiation. 
Kamandi is awestruck at the immense power wielded by that body of unguessable strength. Escape is now possible, but escape to where? It could be dun, 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 a short day's journey into death. Chapter two. <laughs> so he, you know, uh, um, then, then, you know, maybe in a fatherly kind of way or in, in a, a, a purpose for uh, him, his self is bringing Commandy with him. Right. Um, you know, it's like a, 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 a young Robin, right. <laughs> you know, but here, you know, this is, I love, this is the kind of corniness that I love, you know, let's go into the mini stuff. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, this is, this is, oh, this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is kitsch, you know, oh. uh, where it's perfect. I wonder if I could, uh, I wonder if I could find my issue number two here and uh and compare it the coloring because uh i do have a box of commandies here and i'm not sure if i got every single one but let's i'm gonna I'm, while you're doing that i'm gonna take a look and see if i could locate them because i have one i have number one framed so i can't really open it up or anything but i have number two somewhere in my world and uh I should, I might be able to find it while we're, while we're um, broadcasting here. But if not, I'll definitely have it on the next one. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, now they're going through sunken New York, and of course, the sunken New York is um, being run by rat men. Um, but they're off to. Uh, so this is this is an interesting thing. Interesting thing where uh, he's taking like an area. And he's giving it like a personality based on a type of an animal, and for New York, it's yeah. rats. Uh, but gee, I wonder why. Right, and I, I was wondering about that because you know he's got tigers and lions. I wonder if he was doing like you know the Detroit Lions or the you know like stuff like that. <laughs> oh, if he was playing those kind of games, I don't think he had any connection to popular culture. I think he. <laughs> I don't know what his hobbies were, but I can't see him sitting at a baseball or being upset and, and obsessed with a baseball team or something. But right, who knows? Know. Who knows? If you know, leave it in the comment. Right. What was Jack Kirby's hobbies? Uh -huh. um, I, it seems like the guy didn't do very much besides comics. Yeah, I mean, he was, you know, just at his. I mean, the 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 amount of work of stuff he put out is just like constant, you know, he, he, he had, he was also a really good family man. Yeah. He was a very, very loving family man. So I think he probably just spent all this time with uh, Roz and, and his kids. And then the kids had friends and what a wonderful place to just watch kids make up stuff. And then you steal that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, that's true. You know, uh, kids have great imaginations and then an adult who's looking for some ideas and you know like a create creative block says oh yeah that just came out of you know, pure imagination i'll i'll vampirically steal that uh, yes yeah, so they're, they're on a reconnoiter mission but they obviously get captured yeah yeah, they're in the subway tunnels. So the, the rats have just uh, made an, a, a, a second stage of evolution from large to um, animated. <laughs> in right. And uh, this, uh, this art, like, I think, you know, probably someone, is, I mean, maybe, maybe like, one day they'll set up a gallery with giant blow ups, you know, of one issue. Like, wh what would you think of this as a concept? Take one issue of a great Jack Kirby book like this, you know, and then take every panel and blow it up like that Fantastic Four thing to the size of a giant canvas, like maybe, you know, like uh, six foot 
by, you know, well, like whatever, whatever the format is, like six by six or, or something or, or, or even bigger. And then just, you know, put that all over the walls. And so you walk through, you know, and, and you go through the story, but you're also looking at each panel as a, as a piece of pop art, you know, like isolated, uh, you know, and there's just so much there. It's insane, you know. But there's still a minimalism, you know. There he, he he leaves. There's enough left for your imagination to fill it in, and it's not obviously uh, melodramatic and having to go too dark because they're in dark tunnels or, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, it's yeah, you know, it's meant for it's meant for kids and young adults and escapism and capture their imagination i mean i walked away saying wow this is so cool i love commandy i collect commandies you know like every time i find a commandy i want to buy it um you know i don't even know if i have that one i need to walk around with a little list of the ones i have so i don't buy doubles you know (laughs) you know that that was my that was my thing when i went to a convention like you know which ones am i looking for so i had I would have a little scrap of paper. And uh, yeah, these are the things that we go through here. Um, it's just just an amazing series. And, you know, the truth is you could go through this with all of his comics, you know, especially in those later years. Like he goes back to Marvel and he does Devil Dinosaur and he does... Um, the Eternals, right? And it, it's, you know, and so DC isn't really doing with uh, you know with the with the Kirby uh, properties what Marvel has already done, you know. And I, I don't I don't just mean the stuff that he did with Stan Lee. I mean his solo stuff that he did in his really fast graphic style. They've already taken that into a blockbuster movie. You know, I'm sure Eternals made millions of, you know, tens of millions of dollars in profit. So, you know, that that's Disney. You know, they they know how to make money off these properties. They, they're really good at it. They have the studios. They have the creative teams and the distribution. They have everything. And, um, you know, here's just another example of taking a good story and, you know, they did change things around. We we spoke about the Eternals, I think, in one episode when I saw it. You go I, I went to this other website and it's like you know, a list of things that they changed from the movie to the from the comic to the movie. You know. They made like female characters, they made male characters into female, they did all this, you know, stuff like that. But um you know, and in in the beginning, it's just a Jack Kirby comic that he you know that he made. He threw together, you know. So I don't think there's yeah, but there's a lot of development over time. I think that's one of the extraordinary things uh, being DC and Marvel, uh, particularly, is that you know you have um, based on the sales and interest. Um, you know, keeping that that type still alive, you know, you're constantly bringing in new creative teams to spark life into it, and and you know, and 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 go from there. So there's there's more than a three dimensionality to it now. There's all these others, and then you place us in 2020 or 19 or whatever, you know, um, in development for the elementals, and the next thing you know, it you're you know, you're just dealing with a lot of things in society, especially young people are interested in or things trending and stuff. And you make it happen, you know, and you and you take a chance. And then if it hits, it hits. And that's great. You know, it just seems like there's a hell of a lot of like things to check off, you know, in order to uh, keep people's attention. Or gather people's attention because well, things, things have to fall into place, you know. Um, I mean, I don't know what the original print runs on Commandy were, 
you know, I heard, I read somewhere where the, uh, these comics were printed at two, 200,000 copies and then they were like, whatever was unsold was returned. I don't know if that was the case, you know, in 1972, but, um, you know, it, you know, they say it was a hit, you know, and then they, you know, they went monthly after that. So, um, I, you know, the, I, I know it was on every newsstand, right? So every big city and, and, you know, got, got multiple copies, every big city, you know, like, you know, newsstand got multiple copies and drugstores and, you know, wherever kids bought comics, uh, I guess, you know, back then they had, uh, Woolworths and um, I mean, where did uh, when you were just a tiny, tiny little kid, where did you get your comics? I got mine at a candy store on the corner of 91st and Broadway, and uh, I remember stealing. I remember I got caught stealing some comics once. I was trying to steal, you know, I used to get Marvel Team Up and the Defenders, and yeah, I once got busted like trying to slip it into my pocket. My brother made me do it, but um. <laughs> right, but, right, uh, right. you know that I I wasn't there. You know, there was no comic store, and then when I was like, when I was older, you know, maybe like the mid '80s, there was a comic store on 86th Street called West Side Comics, and uh, that scumbag took took me for for everything I was worth. I uh, my my dad made me sell my <laughs> comics, and you know, you learn that right. you only get pennies on the dollar. Yeah. Now my um my introduction to comics was first off the library. There was a lot there was a um I got a hold of uh, how to draw comics the Marvel way and then there was a um a Jack Kirby kind of like bro anyways. And if I ever was home to sick with like the chicken box or something like that my mom would um, pick up usually the three packs from I think it was they were Carl Charlton books but they were repackaged as first books or modern books excuse me um, so they weren't the greatest like um, you know things um, but you know they graphically held my interest um, and also I guess I've said you know a severe dyslexia so um, you know developmentally wise if you're giving me an illustrated book, I have a better chance in, uh, in remembering information than me being forced to read and remember stuff. So there were a lot of like little books put out where it was one page text and then one page of illustration. And they were all the classics, Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer, Count of Monte Cristo, um, Moby Dick. Um, and they, they were illustrated Sounds by... Like Classic Pablo, Mac Pablo, Mac Mac yeah, no, no, these aren't the comics. These were like oh, little the booklets. Little, the they little were golden books. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, and and I've told this story before, and I probably told it before again. Um, sixth grade, a friend of mine, Dot Day Whitley, we changed. He, I had a couple comics on me. Like I said, these these Charlton ones. He really liked the look of them, and he, he traded me one eighty nine and one ninety of Daredevil. And when I opened those books, then the sparks yeah. were flying. And, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But I made comics from the cartoons that I would watch, you know, anything that I was watching, cartoon, Gundarta Barbarian, um, Battlestar Galactica, uh, not a cartoon, but, you know, uh, Star Blazers. Uh, you know, there was just, there's a, you know, Saturday mornings alone, there's just enough stuff that you're being fed that, you know, go there. But my, my addiction was first being held around sixth grade when, when I was introduced to um, uh, Daredevil, where I would go to the Wawa down, down the street in my neighborhood, which is still here, and it's down the street from the neighborhood I live in now. Um, and they had a spinner rack, and I'd spin that rack. And if there was anything on the cover that really, um, you know, teased me out, uh, if I had money left over for buying milk and bread and cheese for mom and I'd pick up, a, you know, whatever, 50 cent or 75 mm -hmm. cent comic. And uh, I was choosy. I also was just I was very picky. So it wasn't like everything turned me on when right. it came to comics. 
Yeah. Well, I, no, no. Um, yeah, I, so... I, um, I, I didn't like some things, but I bought a lot. There was a lot I did like. Like I would collect, you know, every all the Spider Mans. I collected Marvel Tales. I collected Spectacular Spider Man. I collected Amazing Spider Man. I, I collected uh, Marvel Team Up. You know, I could never get enough of Spider Man when I was, you know, those ages. And then um, the Defenders, I was big on, but not the Avengers. The Avengers was kind of like a little convoluted for me. There was a lot going on in characters that I didn't really cotton to. Um, but, um, you know, my big thing was uh, obviously, you know, Jack Kirby, Commandy. Um, I, um, I would collect uh, Master Kung Fu. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, the, the, uh, the whole the long run of, um, Paul Galassi and Doug Mensch on, on, on Master Kung Fu must have been more than 10 years. Um, and I, you know, so I was big on Commandy, Master Kung Fu. And then, yeah, I would get like, um, Marvel two in one because that would have a lot of guests, you know, and, uh, I, you know, I think the reason why I, I was so into the Defenders was because I was, like, infatuated with Hellcat. And uh, when she came in, I know, I know like, she came into the Defenders when Claus Jansen was the inker. I forget who, who was the penciler. Um, and I was like, wow, she's, I love this character. I don't know. I was just like... You know, a, a kid, I, maybe I was going through my, you know, my, my coming of age and everything, but I just couldn't get enough of uh, the Defenders and Hellcat. And if she's going to make an appearance, and then I went back and I got the cat, which was her origin story. And then I went back and got Tigra because uh, the cat turned into Tigra. But, um, yeah, I was also pretty selective, too. I forget what else I used to collect in those days. Um but my but those were my favorites were Master of Kung Fu and Commandy and Spider Man and uh, you know pretty much anything that that uh, Kirby touched you know I would I would pick it up you know and then I got into heavy metal and Epic and I was really into those so you know I guess I gravitated towards uh, you know more adult themed stuff when I was got older but um, the Planet of the Apes magazine I was crazy about. Oh, and Iron Fist. I was huge on Iron Fist. I, I got every single Iron Fist, you know, and I went back and I got the origin story and Marvel premiere. I don't know how I got my hands on it. I had uh, his very first, I must have had a, a copy of the first appearance of Iron Fist in Marvel premiere. And I sold all these comics to West Side Comics for 400 bucks. I had probably 2,000 comics, maybe 1,500, 2,000 comics. And my dad made me do it. So, uh, and I got $400 back. And then, you know, and then as soon as my dad wasn't looking, I used my $400 to turn around and just start buying more comics. Yeah, start all over <laughs> again. <laughs> but, but, um, exactly. yeah, one, one thing I was definitely in on i was in, in all the ways you know like spider-man but i was in all the way on x-men and i think x-men would really eclipse spider-man for me because after a while the art and the story of spider-man went downhill you know after the ross andrew mike esposito years i couldn't even tell you like who took over and uh i just wasn't I, I just wasn't uh, as huge of a Spider-Man guy anymore. And then the X-Men took over, you know, they had a 20 year run as the number one selling comic. And uh, that was pretty remarkable, you know, with uh, Chris Claremont writing, John Byrne art, Terry Austin inks, Tom Orszewski lettering. <laughs> so that was, uh, you know, that was it. And then, you know, I, I probably was turning, like, you know, to be a, a teenager and late teenager by now. And, and then it's just starting to get out of comics. I think by the time the 90s came, I was I was out of it. And then the only thing I was into would be, like, you know, the heavy metal magazines. And, uh, you know, I was older. I was into more older things. You know, there was still no internet or anything. But, um you know, I think I was already just like, you know, an adult, a young adult doing other things. Yeah, that definitely, that definitely comes along. So we get to the end of issue two. Um, 
Then the balloon comes back, which is uh, Ben and his friends. Balloon, which is taking them off to their to their world. And of course, they invite good old Commandy. And of course, what a great way to end an issue where there's all this heartfelt cheer that Commandy is going to be with, you know, some really extraordinary gentlemen in their place and everything. And then, <laughs> doesn't look like that's going to happen in issue three. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure it's either this issue three or four has some of my favorite comic book pages. Some of the sequences I have scans of in a folder where I, if I am lacking in motivation, uh, what to do next, I go to this folder, the sequence, um, which is a fight between um, Commandy and, and this, uh, this ape, it's just, and they're black and white. It's just the ink. There's no color in them. They haven't been colored. So they're, they're I had got them off of, I think, heritage. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, so I'm really super psyched. I'm really super psyched to look into. Well, uh, uh, wait, you say you bought a three. Um No, 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 no. You become a member and you get the, you can uh, see the high res scans. And back in the day, back in the day, you could download them. They didn't have anything blocking your JPEG download. So I downloaded someone oh. was selling those three pages, uh, originals. This is like literally yeah, yeah. like 2002, yeah, I, I used to work 2003. On so I've been carrying them from hard drive to hard drive with me. Um, and as I say, it, 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 it's because of his ability to make things happen in these little boxes, these six boxes, which still to the... It's just astounding. And when I sit down and do something, I'm like, mm, okay, let's see how this flies. But um, yeah, real, I mean, this is this is going to be fun. Um, like I said, there's 20 issues in this book. This is the Commandy Last Boy on Earth by Jack Kirby. Introduction by Mike Royer, Volume 1 from DC. I believe this was put out in 20. 2013. And it's uh, still available. That's the is that the um, omnibus or no? The omnibus. Yeah, there would that there was they call them archives. They're, that's the original run that they made. And um no, 2011, sorry. But um they actually I think re um published this on the 9th of August. Eighth, yeah, the 9th of August, and it's the paperback version. But I couldn't wait because um, you and I had been talking about them so much that um, I had to find. And I found this for 50 bucks, including shipping on eBay. So um, a great investment. And, um, yes, so we definitely are going to do another one of these next week, Issue 3 of Commandy. You no, I just words, wonder, Jay? can, uh, no, I, am I, I have no screen on here, right? You're just casting with, with the, uh, the full screen because, uh, in, in the app, I. Correct. But I can grab your, I can grab your, I can see right now that you have commandy number, uh, two. two. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, um, yeah, so I have, uh, I, I, you know, I just wanted to comment on the, uh, on the original colors and, uh, you know, and, and show like, it's very different. You're, you're showing very, very bright colors, you know, yeah, and I'm showing, yeah, I'm, I'm showing the four color process. Now, I don't know where, where I picked up this commanding number two. I might've had this ever since I was a kid. Some asshole cut little square of that and i think that asshole might have been me but i don't remember <laughs> because what i did was i i uh i was you know i was going to copy the story and i just took certain panels and i pasted them into a notebook so i think this might have actually been me in my stupidity but uh I, it's it totally ruined the uh the value of the thing but it, you know um yeah, no, it's uh, it, it, it's it's really different. You can see also, you know, I'm I'm showing you here, but like, you know, some of these are are very badly out of register. There's a lot of ghosting here where the plates didn't line up and everything. And I don't, I'm not saying like so. Those are the kind of things that they can fix, 
right? If they're if they're doing a treasury edition, but um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the process is, but um, can you go back to that ordeal? Yeah, I can sure. do a, I'll do a side by side. Go back to the page that has ordeal on it. This one, yeah, yeah, put that up. Yeah, just put that up. It's not that bad. Like it gets, it's sweeter. Bring it up. Push the push the issue up. Jake, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can. We got a side. I'll put a. I'll do edit a side by side here. But yeah, it's kind of a shame that they just didn't. Uh, obviously, not grab your issue because you're missing squares. But uh, just grab a <laughs> you know, more than decent issue. Do some super high res scanning and then just reprint it, you know. But I don't know. We would have put some people out of work for being able to do. Um, you and know, you could all, and you could also see the difference between my white paper here that I'm drawing on and, yep. and how, yep. how yellow yellow this paper is. You know, yeah. where, where, where it yeah. started out as white newsprint on day one, and it's just been oxidizing. Um, the other thing is, you know, you wonder. If it's if if some of this registration is out on both sides, you wonder if that's a, a a press thing or if the color was just never done that carefully, right? I'm seeing all these kind of weird. And they were like, pumping these books out, man. These weren't these weren't holy grails. They weren't artifacts that were going to be kept forever. This is disposable entertainment. This was yeah. to be expected that your mother would throw them away or you would forget about them when you go off to college or they didn't yeah. care. They just yeah. wanted them. Damn, they just wanted your 29 cents in profit or nine cents in profit, whatever it was for the yeah, sales. That, yeah. And don't forget, they're also selling advertising to the sea monkeys and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and all that. A whole different world. It's a whole it's, different world that we can't hold to uh, bears, you know, ours now. You know, we definitely go about making comic books in a very different way. Yeah. Um, but we're obviously obsessed with maintaining definitely um, what Jack, you know, Jack brought to the um, to the whole process making, you know. And that's one of the reasons we're just taking a look at his first 20 on Can Commandy. Um, just to yeah. keep us motivated and uh, excited. And if you are... Um, excited about this as well and have things to share with us please do it down in the comments and uh we're gonna put uh an episode up every week as we call them a breakout episode as we're still launching um our turbo pit fighter the making of episodes and um but that's all i got jake yeah we're uh we're we're, we're definitely getting inspired as we're doing our drawing to uh to look at these old commandies and this you know this, uh, this other post-apocalyptic uh, storyline. Cool. All right. Well, I'll see you next week, Jake. All right, Kurt. Sayonara.